does SRT use less bandwidth than RTMP? The answer is a bit more complicated than a straight yes or no. In order to find the answer, we need to first take a closer look at how these two protocols actually work. Hi, I'm Aaron Parecki. I often get asked whether SRT uses less bandwidth because everybody is talking about how much better SRT is for video streaming compared to RTMP. I'm gonna break down how these two protocols work, starting with RTMP. RTMP is built on top of TCP. TCP is what your browser uses to download files, for example. The browser says, I need this file, and then it'll receive a bunch of packets, and any packets that fail will be resent until the whole file is received. TCP is what's handling the logic of making sure every packet makes it from the sender to the receiver. There's a lot going on in TCP, including a lot of logic for noticing whether a packet is missing and asking the sender to retry it. You can think of it like this. When you send data over TCP, each packet gets assigned a number, and the sender says, here's packet one, and the receiver sends back, okay, I got packet one. That response is known as an acknowledgement, or ACK for short. There's a retry timer here as well, so if the sender doesn't get back the ACK message when the timer runs out, the sender will send the packet again. It'll retry sending this packet over and over up to some predefined limit, but this limit can end up being actually several minutes long. So now imagine this is all happening extremely quickly. The sender is firing off packets, the receiver is sending back acts for the packets that it got. The packets can arrive out of order, and the receiver can put them back together in order because each packet has a number. So this is great for sending files. It means the data can arrive out of order and it can be put back together again. And it also means the receiver can tell whether any of the packets went missing. The receiver can tell if there's a gap in the packet numbers that it saw from the sender. So now let's look at how this applies to RTMP. RTMP describes how to send video data over TCP. If the connection is reliable and fast, then everything is fine. The RTMP encoder sends the packets out, getting back an ACK for each packet. But what happens if there is a glitch in the network? What if some packets start getting dropped or some packets start getting delayed, like when you're on a mobile network? So for example, let's say the RTMP encoder sends a packet that gets delayed longer than the retry timer. So it doesn't get the ACK back in time. That means it'll try sending the packet again and again. And meanwhile, remember this is video we're talking about. There's a bunch of new video data to send as well. So the queue of packets starts getting backed up. TCP doesn't really understand the priority of the packets and is treating each packet equally. But in reality, at some point, an old missing packet is irrelevant. Like it doesn't make sense to keep trying to send that chunk of video that went missing two minutes ago. And eventually, if there are enough problems in the network, you end up falling behind and it can never really catch up. So while RTMP works fine when there's a solid network connection, it's really not well suited to what happens when there's any kind of network problems along the way. So back to TCP. Remember, TCP is the protocol that handles all the logic of checking whether packets were received and retrying them as long as possible. Now, there's a different network protocol that works completely differently. That's called UDP. UDP is a fire and forget protocol. It has no built-in way to know if a packet was successfully received. The sender just fires off a packet and it may or may not make it to the destination, and the sender will never know whether or not it made it. And importantly, there's no sequence numbering of the packets, so the receiver also won't know if it ever missed any packets. But the one-way stream of UDP is useful for some things, especially when you need to prioritize real time, and if you can live with some packets not making it to their destination. So what if we can get the best of both worlds? What if we could send a video stream using UDP, but then add the reliability and retry aspect of TCP? And that's exactly what SRT is. SRT is a way to send video data over UDP. Now, it wouldn't be very useful to just send all the video packets to the receiver without any acknowledgement, because if there were ever any network issues, you would just start dropping frames. So what SRT does is it has its own way that handles acknowledgements, but since it's part of SRT itself, it can do it in a way that's actually aware of the data that needs to be sent. This is all getting very technical, so let me take a step back and give you an analogy. So TCP doesn't know anything about the data that's actually being sent. Think of it like a package delivery service. You can put whatever you want in a box, give it to a shipping company, and they'll get it to the destination. They don't really care what's inside. One box contains an expensive laptop, and another can contain some frozen ice cream. And they're both treated the same way as they make their way through the delivery network. But what happens when there's a delay? Well, that box of ice cream will eventually melt and the ice cream will be useless. So if the package is going from Portland to New York and gets stuck in Chicago along the way, and the ice cream melts, there's really no point in continuing to send that package to New York. It would be better to just throw it away in Chicago. But since you've packaged it in a box that looks like every other box, the shipping company will deliver it anyway. 
And that's because this shipping company is a general purpose shipping company and can handle shipping all kinds of things in their boxes. This is analogous to TCP, where TCP doesn't know what's inside the packets. It's just responsible for getting the packets to where they're going. So now imagine instead of just one ice cream box, you need to send a bunch of ice cream across the country and you need to do it every day. You will need to budget for the occasional shipping delay, so you accept that there will be some percent of the ice cream that melts before it actually gets the destination. It would be expensive and wasteful to send it using a shipping company that doesn't understand this unique property of what's being shipped. So instead, you need to hire your own couriers and give them specific instructions. You tell your couriers that they are carrying ice cream and give them a way to tell if it's already melted. Then you tell them that if the ice cream does melt, they should just throw it away and come back to pick up some new ice cream. So now you've built a delivery network that's more efficient because there is no wasted time transporting useless melted ice cream. And that's an example of building a custom protocol that's actually aware of the data being sent. Okay, so this takes us back to SRT. SRT takes the fire and forget UDP protocol and then adds in video specific logic for handling retries to give us back that reliability that TCP provided. So instead of the receiver sending back an ACK for every single packet that it's received, it sends back an ACK just every once in a while that says, hey, I've received all the packets up to number 64. Now this already reduces a ton of network traffic needed. So now instead of sending packet one, getting an ACK for one, sending two, getting an ACK for two, it's send packet one, two, three, four, et cetera, et cetera, to 64, and get back one ACK saying, yes, I got all 64. The other thing the receiver can do is send back a NAC packet, which is saying that it noticed a gap in the sequence of numbers. So if the receiver sees 1, 2, 3, 4, 8, 9, 10, it can send back a NAC that says, I missed 5, 6, and 7. That way, the sender can prioritize retrying those missing packets first instead of sending new packets. So if this is all able to happen fast enough, the receiver might actually get the missing data soon enough to not lose any of the video data before it needs to be shown. And getting even further into the video specific features of the protocol, there's also a feature called too late packet drop, which lets the sender not even bother sending old packets if it knows they're not useful anymore. If the receiver is displaying a video frame from two o'clock and three seconds, then there's no point in the sender retrying any failed packets from any earlier video frames, since the receiver has moved on by now and isn't interested in the old data. And that's something you can't do with RTMP, because the retry logic is not in RTMP, it's in the layer below in TCP, which is not aware of the video data. There's a lot of other interesting features of the SRT protocol, but too many to go into in this video. Instead, I wanna go back to our original question. Does SRT use less bandwidth than RTMP? Well, technically yes, but that's not actually the relevant question to ask. So think back to how the acts and retries are sent. SRT sends fewer acts and can send less data to recover from network issues but the savings aren't actually that significant compared to the amount of data in the actual video stream being sent. So if you're sending an H.264 video stream over both RTMP and SRT, the actual video data is the same on both. So you're only gaining the tiny amount saved by the fewer ACK packets, which again is really actually small in comparison to the size of the video data itself. But where it gets more interesting is that RTMP is actually limited to H.264, but SRT can support other codecs like H.265. H.265 is much better at compressing video and can use much less bandwidth. So what's more important is that SRT allows you to use more efficient codecs than RTMP, and it can deliver that video in a much more reliable way. A video feed that would have required a six megabit RTMP stream can actually be sent in around a two megabit stream in SRT using H.265, and you'll get just as good a picture out the other side. And that's why it's super exciting to see so many video encoders starting to support SRT and H.265 natively. Let me know down in the comments if you have any questions or if you'd like to see more videos like this that go a bit deeper into the technical topics around video streaming. As always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.